So we're going to write a program. And the first program that I think it's always best to write when you're first getting involved with any kind of PLCs is one really simple one that says when I flick switch one, light one comes on. When I flick switch two, light two comes on. Really straightforward to do, not problematic. Now, in this instance, we're going to program it in something called function block diagrams because that's what this is set up to be working in. So when we're working in this diagram editor here in the network project, we can only deal with function block diagrams. This is important for you because nearly all interfaces with PLCs that are modern deal with function block diagrams. They don't work very often with ladder diagrams. But the beauty of this piece of software is we can actually manipulate both. So we'll look at those shortly. But let's write our simple program. So what we know is we've got inputs that we need to trigger and we've got outputs that we want to come on. So we'll start with inputs. So over here in the instruction box, and as you see, if you hover your mouse over, it will actually show you what they are. Um, and there is a little help file that you can go on and actually find out information on them. But for now, we're just going to click on it. It's highlighted, and if I then bring the mouse over, we can see there's a little tiny symbol that represents it's going to put a block in, and we can click and we can dump one there. It's still on input, so I can put another one there, and put another one there, and then put another one there. I've only got four outputs on this particular unit, so I'm only going to do four switches. Um, we could do more. Um, depending on the number of outputs that you've got. But this will give us a starting point. So we've got four inputs. As you can see, they're already labelled. I've got input one, input two, input three, input four. And then I'm going to go to the output. Now you'll notice the output, bring it down, is labelled as a Q. And then all we're going to do is I'm just going to, while it's in output mode, as soon as you see that little symbol come next to the cursor, you can dump it in. And actually, as you can see, it doesn't really matter where they go. You don't have to be too fussy. We're not dealing here, in this instance, with ladder programming where everything needs to be perfectly lined up. So, we've got our inputs, we've got our outputs. Um, now, to actually do the programming bit couldn't really be easier. I'm going to go to the little output tags that you've got on the side of each one. Of your inputs, click and hold, and I'm just going to drag it across until it makes contact. And as you can see, uh, the logo has sorted out the connection to make it look a little bit neater. So drag it across, drag it across, drag it across, and there is our, in essence, our program written. Um, now what we need to do is download it to the PLC. Very straightforward. Come across the two little images of the PLC itself. We've got the one pointing down, which, as you see, is PC2 logo. And we click on that. That will bring up the interface box. Um, the interface box has the target IP address. Um, it's got a test facility. Now, that's useful if you have multiple PLCs on the network within the control cabinet. So very often you will find an industrial network switch mounted in the cabinet, lots of ethernet cables connecting all the individual PLCs, and you can communicate with all of them from this one screen. We don't need to do that, we have a network with one PLC on it. We're just gonna go straight down to the bottom and click on OK. And you can see it's gone through all its downloading procedures and it's come up with the dialog box saying, Devices in stop mode, change it to run. Now that tells me that the program has been installed and that it's now ready to go into running mode. So we click yes and the PLC is now ready to roll. So here's our PLC. Um, we know it's in run mode because the run stop light is green. If it's red, it means it's not in run mode. Sometimes it flashes when it doesn't have any instructions at all or it's got a fault. So we can flick our uh, input switch number one and as we see, our first light on the right-hand side comes on. Input two, 
output 2, input 3, output 3, input 4, output 4. So we have a fully programmed PLC which does, as you can see, nothing more than flick some lights on and off. But what we've proved is that our outputs are working well because, well, we can see them. And we proved that our inputs are working well. So all the mechanical connections that we've made with all of the wiring has worked perfectly and we have an operational PLC that we can now get in and communicate and program with. Okay, so how does this relate to the ladder programming that we've already looked at? This is function bot diagrams, so it's slightly different. In fact, in this instance, it doesn't look very different at all. Now, the beauty of the logo soft is we can now transfer this function block diagram into something that looks more like a ladder diagram um, and see how that looks. That's fairly straightforward. I'm just going to right click and select all, and that highlights everything. And then we just hover over one of the components and copy. That's now saved it to the clipboard. I can then go to diagram mode over on the far left hand side. Click on that and we're going to open a blank page. And right click and paste. And there is, just get rid of all that highlighting. There, and there is our function block diagram um, for the light switches that we just produced. Now, over here in this top row, we have the convert to ladder button that you can see here. If we click that, it will produce another drawing, which is a slightly more familiar ladder diagram. Now, there's something within this software that picks and chooses where the components go. For some reason, uh, input one is down the bottom, then input two, then four, then three. Uh, I can't tell you why it does that, um, but it does. And it makes no difference. In fact, it highlights the operation of a PLC and the way it functions. What a PLC does is it scans the ladder program constantly, multiple times a second. And it's just going down through the ladder programming, scanning, scanning, scanning. And what it's doing is it's looking for any changes of state in any of these first instructions. If it sees a change in state in these first instructions, it then follows the ladder along and changes the next instruction in line, depending upon what happened here. So the actual order that you assemble it doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as all the information is there. PLC will find it. So here we can see in its bizarre order that it's done very much like we had if we just look back across to the original we have the inputs on one side the outputs on the other we don't have the ladder running down here but we do if we look at the ladder diagram there's the ladder here. Now whereas in traditional ladder diagrams you would also have the second up right here and link it all across. The reality is you don't actually need that. So they've just got the single ladder coming down here and then the rungs moving across. So you can see that the flow is coming down here, it comes across, it comes to this particular switch here and then goes to this output. So we can see that by closing this switch would allow this light to come on. Now at this stage, it's very easy to think in terms of electricity. So we have electricity coming down here. It flows along this wire that we've got here to this switch. And if we close this switch, it will allow the electricity to run across and energize this coil here. Now that's fine up until a point, but there is a little bit of a risk when we are dealing with PLCs. Remember that this input that we have here actually it doesn't exist it's imaginary it's within the circuitry of the PLC it's affected by an external switch that does have electricity running through it that does have a flow of electrons and it's that flow of electrons which nudges this little switch and makes it work 
So when we're dealing with PLCs and the internal circuitry that we produce by programming, it's important to get into the habit of not talking about things being turned on or turned off, being live or not, um, having electricity flowing through them. We need to talk in terms of logic because that's all this is. In reality within the PLC what's happening is the external connection from the external switch is changing the state of this particular input which means that the logic which the computer has flowing down through here the logic flows through here and because this has changed its state logic can then flow to this output and this output doesn't turn on but it becomes true so we're dealing with on or off being true or false and we're dealing with logic flowing it's not that important when it's at this simple stage but when you start to have an awful lot of external inputs coming in using real physical switches and real electricity flowing that are then affecting internal circuitry where we're dealing with logic if you don't differentiate between the two it can be very quickly confusing to everybody involved so here is our four line very simple ladder logic program which allows the lights to turn on we can make each one of these true when we make any one of these true the output connected on the same rung becomes true which will then trigger the relay to turn the light on one of the key useful features of the LogoSoft program is its ability to simulate so this means you can start to develop programs externally, yeah, sitting in the warmth and comfort of a nice office, and develop what it's going to do before you take it to the factory floor. Um, the simulation button is in the diagram editor. Don't get one in the network project, so you need to test everything in the diagram mode. And then when you're happy with it, cut and paste it across into the network project. And we've got on this top row here, We've got a little sim button so if we click on that that brings us up this dialog box down the bottom here so what it's done is it's represented each and every single one of the switches the inputs that we've done and in this instance it's got toggle switches now if i right click on those we can change it to momentary buttons we can change it to a frequency input and um, so it gives us some flexibility into what we can actually get it to do We'll leave it like that for now. And with the simulation running, what we can do is we can trigger this switch so that we now see, because we've triggered the external switch here, then we have made this contact true, which means our logic has flowed through. Q1 has gone true, which means the light, which is in the simulation, at least connected to Q1, has also illuminated. And we can do that with two and three and four. And if we start using things like cumulative timers over a long period of time, influencing different outputs, um, we can actually set it to go overnight and come back to it and see what the end result is the following morning. Flick back across to our function block diagrams again looks very similar to the ladder and I flicked on the simulator and again we can do exactly the same and you can see how the individual parts of our circuit are going from blue when they're not true and becoming red when they are so I've turned on input one input one here has become true the logic has flown through to output Q1 and Q1 light has come on so really actually very very useful um, and worth experimenting with before you start making any connections it, it, it's one of the big steps forward over the uh, equipment like the Allen Bradbury that you will be um, experimenting with which didn't really have this facility uh, because it just gives you some kind of visual understanding of what's happening within the PLC it gives you an idea whether you're on the right track or not